You're tuned in to Ask the Master Auto Technician. Car questions? Get answers right now. Call 850-763-0555. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah. Well, it's Saturday morning, and like they said of the weatherman, you need to have your umbrella and you need to have some suntan lotion. That's just a perfect, perfect Northwest Florida summer day out here. And it's going to be, you know, you wake up this morning and you got the rain pouring down, then you go back outside and you see two rainbows. I mean, so it's just normal for this type time of year for us. When I came here in 74, I was amazed uh, just how pleasant it was to live here, even in the summertime. People say, man, it's, it's air you can wear. I agree, but where I'm from in Arkansas, man, and it was like 100 degrees and it was just like hot and humid there too and, and there was no breeze whatsoever at least we have a sea breeze here in northwest florida and speaking of staying cool that's where i'm going on this air conditioning seems to be on every young man and young woman's heart or mind this year is you can't hardly go anywhere with if your air conditioner does not work or if you keep continuing to have problems with it and you can't get it fixed and i'll be honest with you air conditioning is it's it's, it's a science and it really is and every time or I should say every time, just about every time we work on a car, I learn something a little different. Some do's, some don'ts, some things that I didn't think about, some different variables that cause a problem. And it's amazing how some people think it's just cut and dry. You know, you just change this part, it works. Change this part, it works. And uh, giving a perfect example, someone comes in, they put, um, they are from Ohio. I uh, just use an example. They came from Ohio, they came down here halfway down here, or about three quarters of the way down here, about Dothan, Alabama, I think is where they said, the compressor air conditioning stopped working. Uh, they said, uh, you know, well, we're going to look at So they come to Panama City. We're a AAA shop. So they come and look to our shop because they're recommended from AAA. They come to us. We look at it and go, well, your compressor's locked up. Uh, we don't know why it locked up, but that's not a good sign. When compressors lock up, they send metal shavings and trash all throughout the system. And said, so worst case scenario is you'll end up having to replace the condenser. It's a dual unit. You got a unit in the back back there. You'll end up having to take that unit take it apart to flush all the oil and trash that may have gotten inside it, clean the expansion valve out. A lot of work you got to do and it can be a rather expensive job, a $2,000 plus dollar job to do all this. Compressors, lines, hoses, condenser, dryer, uh, pull the expansion valve off, possibly replace it, do all this stuff on it. And they just said, well, no, thank you. We'll wait till we get back home. And I said, I encourage you. That, that's what you really should do because let's find out what's going on with it. But I said, what I'm going to do is I'm going to see how much refrigerant you have in the system because he mentioned that someone had charged the system up for him. And I said, well, let's see what we can find. So we uh, discharged the system and it's supposed to hold 2.69 pounds. We pulled 3.79 pounds out, over one pound more of refrigerant. And I said, that's what locked your compressor up. And I said, to make matters worse, I pulled over five and a half ounces of oil out of it. Normally, I never pull more than a half an ounce to an ounce. That's all I'm gonna get out of one when I evacuate a system. So we know the system has to come completely apart we know we're going to have to flush everything. More than likely, it's a two-stage condenser. You can't flush those effectively, so you're going to end up replacing that. And I said, you're going to have a very expensive bill. And they go, and I said, why don't you just wait to get home and have your local technician take care of it? Well, he gets home, his local technician looks at it, says, all you need is a compressor. They throw a compressor on there, a $1,000 bill later, everything's fine. And then I get in trouble for telling the customer he needs more work. The question I had to write a letter was, what happened if I told the customer it only needed a compressor, I put the compressor on and that didn't fix the problem. Now I look like an idiot that's trying to overcharge a customer. So I'd rather be cautionary on of, of telling a customer the worst case scenario than trying to sugarcoat it and it's almost like a bait and switch. And that's where I'm kind of going to go on this part right here. I have a lot of people that call up with just want a price on some repairs. You know, I need a, a brake job. I need a clutch job. I need a cylinder head job. I need an engine job. And I'm supposed to give them a price on it just like a, you buying a loaf of bread or a gallon of milk. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. What ends up happening, why people ask that, because that's the only thing they know. They only know their car is broken or something's wrong with it and they've been told or they figured out that they need this or they need that. And so that what they end up doing is they make a dozen phone calls <clears throat> they call different shops and they say, how much? And 99% of the time, the shop will give them a price. And then they, they say, and from the South, they'll say thank you politely and hang the phone up. And if they're, you know, if they're not polite, next sound you hear if you're a shop owner or shop service writer is click. You know, you don't even get a thank you. So you give them a price and after 13, 14 phone calls, the customer's thoroughly confused. He's got prices from $29.95 to $2,099. 
Uh, and it, it, the point being is he has, he's nowhere closer to getting the car fixed than, it, than the, when he first started. So here is my advice if you're trying to get your car fixed. Have someone look at it. Pay them for the diagnostics on it. Yeah. You wouldn't dare go to a doctor and have him look at you and say, oh, oh thanks, doc. I appreciate that and walk out. You know, you pay for his time and you pay for his knowledge. And I'm surprised how many people think that technicians out here should give diagnostics away. And I'm surprised by smart people that do that, doctors and lawyers. I've actually had them come in here and say, you're going to charge me? Tell me what's wrong with my car? Yeah. Why? No one else does. Well, apparently you haven't been going to an auto repair shop in a long time as well either. It costs a lot of money to diagnose cars. And be honest with you, there's no money in the diagnostics. The money's in actually repairing them if they do break. And that's what you really need to understand about getting your car fixed. Getting it fixed right requires that you find a shop that can communicate with you and verify that your problem and you get agreement what the problem is. I've had customers come in and say, I have a noise and I'm going for a ride and I can't determine what noise they're talking about. I say, is this what you're hearing? And they say, no, I'm hearing another noise. And I would have more than likely tried to fix the noise that I was hearing plainly. But instead, there's no, that's not what my problem is. My problem is this other noise. And after a few more blocks of driving or sometimes miles, we actually hear what their complaint is. And then we say, oh, that noise. So first thing is, please, if you're going to get an estimate on a car, on a repair, first off, get complete communication what your problem is. Calling someone up and saying, I need a brake job, or I need a compressor, or I need air conditioning work, or I need this or that, doesn't do anything but can totally confuse you, totally makes you ah, crazy is what it does. It turns you in from a sane person with you know an idea what's wrong with your car and what needs to be fixed. Now you've got prices that range anywhere from here to here, and then you get them, well, we'll... It, We'll do whatever it takes. And then the next thing you know, you take the car in the shop that gave you the cheapest price or the one you thought was the best price and they talk to you the best on the phone. And then they look at the car and they go, no, it's not what we said on the phone. You're going to require this. And it's going to require that. Now you've got a bigger bill. And to me, that is almost what we call bait and switch. And that's like telling you you're going to do one thing and do just the opposite. And that is not ethical. It's not right. And get I can get you very, very upset. So my best advice is before you get anything done, make sure a professional looks at it to give you a price. And speaking of professionals, I have Jay Lott from Napa Auto Parts at the corner of 15th and Jinx Avenue. You've been there for a very long time. Now, Jay, you've been, we've been running specials for the Wounded um, uh, Heroes program lately, and you've been do donating a dollar for every electrical rotating part, which is like starters and alternators and uh, maybe batteries, too. I'm not quite sure. Yeah. And batteries, batteries, as, batteries as well. If a uh, consumer rebate, the consumer actually can get up to $25 provided you buy an alternator and a battery. But wow. if you just buy an alternator, it would be 15 and 10 for a battery. And then the, the manufacturer contributes the dollar per uh, unit to this project. So it's been, it's been uh, well received nationally. Uh, we've got a couple more days left today and then Monday and Tuesday for the month of July. Mm -hmm. And now uh, that, that promotion will continue on. So uh, we've been real proud to uh, honor our military and their families. And, and Jay, and I, we, I'm thank you for putting that on about we're honoring our military by our, our wounded heroes out here and fallen heroes and taking care of them and sending. And, and the money goes to. Uh, does it go to their uh, their families or what? What is the money actually going? Money is collected actually going the, to. The money actually goes to the the. The wounded warrior project uh, uh, that are going through rehab mm -hmm. and maybe can't afford to do some of the things they need to do for the family because even though a lot of those expenses are covered, they get to a point in time just like any other insurance and they say, okay, you've reached a point and there's no further improvement, and but they may still need some type of therapy that, that helps the family ah. of, those, of those injured uh, warriors. So. And that's we have that in Panama City. We have the wounded warriors that come here. It's a retreat for them, for families to heal emotionally right. as well. And that's part of, and that probably helps go for it. But one of the things we were talking about since I've got you on here, I only got a couple minutes left. We I'm telling people before they just call to get a price on on fixing a part or, or something on a car, they should get it checked out by a professional to make sure because you and I both know many a time someone's walked into your shop, ordered an alternator, ordered a starter, and that didn't fix it. And it costs them a lot extra money because you can't take back an electrical problem that's been installed. 
That's uh, right. And uh, so what would be your, I'm telling people instead of calling and going, you know, getting a, diff, a dozen different estimates on something, have a professional look at it. And I know we have how many Napa Auto Care Centers in Bay County that can do that? Well, we have, we have, we have eight. Uh, that can do that. And a good example, James, last Saturday, I, it was my Saturday morning to work. Family pulled up. They're out under the hood. They come in, and his uh, air conditioner is is not even blowing. And right. he thinks it's the fuse. And we wind up looking up a relay for it, gave him the relay. And before I sold him the relay, I said, I suggest you take it to a repair shop. And all our auto care centers are closed on Saturday. But the gentleman across the street uh, at, at uh, that facility has a diagnostic right. scan tool, and he could help pinpoint the problem. I said, because once I sell you this part and you put it in, That's you it. will have spent $16, not, not expensive, but at the same time, it doesn't mean it's going to fix the problem. Right. He said, well, I want to try it anyway. So he did. He came back in, said it didn't work. And I said, well... I suggest you take your vehicle across the street <laughs> and let them pinpoint the problem for you before you spend any more money. That's right. And that's and, that, that's what needs to be done. And, yep. Jay, we only got a few seconds left. And what's going to be our uh, keyword for 10% off? Well, uh, I, I think uh, just because we're still honoring the All fallen right. heroes, let's use the fallen hero wounded warrior for the rest this next week, and then we'll get into something else during the month of August. All right, sounds good. That's Jay Lock. Give him a call at 7848. Uh, four, 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 three, four, one. I'll get it out. Seven, eight, five, four, four, three, four, four, four. I'll get it out in a minute. All right. Thanks. We'll be right back. Thank you. James Auto Center. We fix it right. Guaranteed. Beep, 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 beep. Yeah.